On October 23, 1857, in the Ilocos Norte province in the municipality of Badoc, the painter Juan Luna was born. The parents of Juan Luna were Joaquin Luna and Lorena Novicio. He has four brothers, Manuel, Jose, Joaquin, and Antonio. He began his education at Ateneo Municipal, then transferred to the Escuela Nautica de Manila to become a marine officer, a position that took him all over Asia. But every time he returned to Manila, Luna would enroll in painting classes at the Academia de Debujo y Pintura. Don Lorenzo Guerrero, his first art teacher, recognized the young painter's potential right away. Don Lorenzo persuaded Luna's parents to send their son to Spain to hone his skills. As a result, in 1877, Luna and his brother Manuel traveled to Spain to study at the San Fernando School of Fine Arts in Madrid. Luna's talent was quickly recognized in Spain. He immediately won the first academic prize in his first year of school. He took private lessons from Alejo Vera, a well-known contemporary painter in Spain, while still in school. Vera was so impressed with Luna's abilities that when he had to travel to Rome for commissions, he would bring his student with him. Luna adored the splendor of Rome. He was captivated by the works of the masters and openly absorbed the passion of classical painters such as Michelangelo and Raphael. Because Rome encouraged self-expression, he created the majority of his award-winning works there. This is where he painted Daphne and Cleo and the death of Cleopatra. Daphne e Cleo was his entry to the Liceo Artistico de Manila where he won a silver palette and the death of Cleopatra earned him his first international prize, a silver medal from the Madrid Exposition of Fine Arts. While the beauty of Rome lifted the Filipino painter's spirits, the same could not be said for his living conditions. Among the blossoming artistic vision was the most pitiful work environment. It is a mystery how Luna managed to create his masterpiece in the most despicable neighborhood. The artist lived in Via Marguta, a rundown alley where horsemen would park their horses, which were the city's mode of transportation at the time. The area smelled strongly of horse dung and the horses were given showers there, so pedestrians were easily soaked. Luna lived in squalor during his first few months in Rome, and it was in such circumstances that he painted the death of Cleopatra, which earned him his first international prize in 1881. He went on to say that it outperformed the paintings submitted by Italian and Spanish artists and was only three votes away from winning the gold medal. Luna rose to prominence after winning a silver medal at the Madrid Art Exposition. Suddenly, the young Filipino painter piqued the interest of European art guilds. The Philippine colonial government granted him a four-year pension for his rise to fame. The artist was required to paint a canvas for the Spanish government as part of this obligation. Luna eventually ended up painting three instead of just one. The artist was no longer concerned about his day-to-day -day expenses thanks to his monthly stipend and he was ready to embark on his next project. While still enjoying the success of the death of Cleopatra, the artist was already planning the gory images for the spolarium. The inspiration came from Charles Louis de Zobri's book Rome in the time of Augustus, The Adventures of Gaul in Rome. The main character is awakened in the story 
by crying voices from the Roman amphitheater. When he goes to the basement to check, he encounters a tragic scene, a wounded gladiator crying in pain, surrounded by mourning family members. Juan Luna decided to immortalize that agonizing moment on a massive canvas. The end result was a stunning work of drama, pity, and terror. And while the book may have inspired him, many believe Luna was also influenced by his grief over the death of his favorite brother Manuel, who was only 11 months older. They both attended nautical school before moving to Spain to pursue their respective crafts. Luna went on to become a painter, while Manuel went on to become a violinist. No one was aware of Luna's intention to participate in the Madrid Art Exposition, but he was working in public. Visitors flocked in droves to the artist's humble workshop in Via Margita. They were ardent Luna observers who scrutinized every line in his drawing and brush stroke from his palette. Juan Luna wanted to immerse himself in the artistic environment of Paris after his victory in Madrid, so he opened a studio at 65 Boulevard Arago in 1885. Other Filipino expatriates were also drawn to the City of Lights and the Filipinos in Paris would congregate in Luna's place, eventually organizing themselves into Los Indios Bravos. The members of Los Indios Bravos were Jose Rizal, Graciano Lopez Jaina, Mariano Ponce, Marcelo del Pilar, and several others. The Barcelona Provincial Committee bought the Spolarium for 20,000 pesos. Luna married Paspardo de Tavera and they have two children. Then something tragic happened. The artist hurt his brother-in-law Felix and committed the murders of his wife and mother-in-law out of jealous rage. Luna was acquitted of murder and parricide charges a few months later, on February 7, 1893, by a French court. However, according to a different account, he was found guilty but received a light sentence because it was a crime motivated by passion. From France, he was banished. Whichever version is true, it does not matter because he returned to Madrid after leaving France with his son. He returned to the Philippines after spending 17 years away and began to paint the country's landscapes. He was detained on suspicion of sedition two years later as a result of his involvement with the propaganda movement in Europe. Fortunately, Luna was among those who received a pardon from King Alfonso XIII on the monarch's birthday, May 27, 1897. The following month, Luna went back to Spain. After the Spanish-American War of 1898, Luna was chosen to represent the Philippines at the Paris Convention, which sought diplomatic recognition for the Philippine Republic. His brother Antonio was an active member of the Revolutionary Katipunan Movement. Antonio Luna became a general of the Revolutionary Army under the command of President Emilio Aguinaldo. Following a dispute between Antonio Luna and Emilio Aguinaldo, soldiers who supported Emilio Aguinaldo killed Antonio Luna. Juan Luna left for Hong Kong as soon as he found out about his brother's murder. He suffered a heart attack while in Hong Kong and passed away. He was initially buried in the Happy Valley Cemetery, but his remains were exhumed in 1920 and kept in the house of his son. They were later relocated to a niche in the San Agustin Crypt Chapel. Luna's Polarium painting was given to the Philippines as a gesture of goodwill by the Spanish government in 1953. 
The painting traveled to various provinces in the Philippines before being given to the National Museum. Unfortunately, the canvas had to be cut into four pieces for transport, which are still visible today. For us to be able to continue producing videos that highlight the Philippines and Filipinos, we kindly ask that you like, share, and subscribe.